We're down here at Ship Creek near downtown Anchorage in what's called the mud hole or the horseshoe, depending on what you like to call it. And uh, we're going to be trying to catch king salmon today. You don't need a lot of stuff. Just need a pretty heavy duty fishing pole. As you can see, one you don't really mind getting coated with mud and salmon eggs. And you need some good line. I like to use at least 30 pound test so I don't lose a lot of fish. Then what you want to do is you want to pick up one of these. This is called a cheater rig. So what you do is you tie it onto a barrel swivel and then it goes down here to this spinning glow and the current makes it spin. You put some eggs in here and that attracts the fish. So what we're going to do though first is put a sliding weight on our line. I like to use about an ounce depending on the size of the tide, less or more. It's really up to you. So you want a slider so it's going to slide on the line. You put that through, put that on the line before you tie anything. Just drop it down there. And then you want to have a barrel swivel. Yep. So you tie, it's called a cheater rig to it. So it's just called a basic fisherman's knot. You put it through the end of the barrel swivel. You give yourself, oh, two to three inches of line to work with. And I use my finger to keep a loop here. You'll see why in a minute. And then I just move it around six times. One, two, three, four, six. And then you have this loop with your finger in it, and you just pass the line through there. You grab the, line, the end of the line, and you slowly push this knot down as you tighten. Pull it down. I also like to put a what's called a half hitch. It's just an overhand knot like you're tying your shoe, just to make sure that that thing holds. Cut off the extra. Make sure it's going to stay. This is the end of the cheetah rig. You know, we've got this spinning glow which spins in the water to attract the fish. We're going to add some more. We're going to put some bait on here. I use this netting. You can get it at any, you know, sporting goods store in the fishing section. It's good to hold the bait. It holds the eggs together so the little fish can't rob them from you. There's this little loop. You just push that out. This is where your bait's going to go. And that'll hold it in there. So we're going to make a little pouch with the netting and then we're going to put it through there. We take salmon eggs, make a little ball with them. I like to keep them all together. Put them right in the middle there. And then pull the sides up. And you're left with a little, little pouch, a little purse pouch. You want to twist it all together. Make it nice and tight. So you put it through the loop. And then you pull it tight. And you want to pull as hard as you can. And then the whole thing sits like that. And the current will just hold it up in the river like this. We're all set up. We've got our sliding weight here. And it goes down to our, our lure. Now when you cast it, you won't want to cast all the way out in the middle of the river. The fish they actually run right along the bank. So best not to cast it much farther than that, really. You just let it go down to the bottom. And when you see it stop, you just make sure the line is tight. And then you wait. You can always tell somebody's been to Ship Creek by their waders, and these are really a must-have for the mud hole here. As you can see, they're covered in stuff, and I always have a pair that I just wear down here because you'll never get this stuff off. Now, the first thing you want to do before you buy anything else is get a fishing license. It's $25 for residents. Then you need a king tag. Kings are a species where they're really limited, so you have to buy a $10 king tag or king stamp. For king salmon, the limit is generally one fish per day, bigger than 20 inches. If it's smaller than 20 inches long, it's called a jack. It's an immature male that came up the river too early, really, to spawn. If you catch a jack that's under 20 inches, you can keep fishing. Otherwise, if it's over 20 inches, you have to stop if you take it out of the water. You can catch and release, but you absolutely can't take the fish out of the water. So you need to leave it in the net if you're going to let it go. The moment it comes out of the water, it's your fish. As you can see, it gets pretty crowded down here. Fishing etiquette is one of the most important things and generally everybody's pretty friendly and works together but if someone around you has a fish you want to make sure you get your line out of the water as fast as you can and get, get away from the bank and let them fight the fish because if your line gets tangled they could lose the fish. Also if you get a fish you want to make sure you yell really loudly fish or fish on so that other people could get their line out of the water too. Last but not least, need one of these things. You know, I like to give them just one or two quick whacks on the head. You really don't have to hit them that hard. And then we're going to gill it so that it bleeds. Just go down in there. 
and cut that to the other side. This bleeds it and it, it saves the meat. As soon as you catch the fish and you get them secured, got it out of the water, you got to take your fishing license out and sign it on the back. And you're going to sign the date, the water it was caught in, and the species. There's a lot of ways to catch king salmon out here, but uh, this is uh, probably the most popular in this area, and that's to have a sliding float. And then at the end here, you've got uh, two hooks. And we're going to put our bait on this one up here, hopefully, as this bobs along, the fish will bite it. The two main methods, fishing on the bottom, and this is fishing on the top. You fish from right to left, and you try to stay in the rhythm of everybody else, because uh, you'll get all tangled up. It's kind of it's kind of like choreographed, really, kind of like the Rockettes, but with fishing poles. The best time to come out is either two hours before to two hours after high tide. When the tide comes in, the fish follow it in, and then when it goes out, they kind of start to follow it out. So generally, the best fishing is two hours before to two hours after high tide, that four hour window. There are a bunch of different species. This is the first. Kings are the first to come up the creek and generally fish those until the middle of June. And then after that, you wait for the silvers, which start showing up. Um, and there will be pinks and reds and chums mixed in, but mostly silvers. And those show up late July, August. So that's really all you need.